The second season of Apple TV Plus's Foundation finishes with the Empire in disarray as all the tension that had been building up throughout the entire season results in some dramatic clashes. The last episode is packed with surprises that keep the audience on the edge of their seats. We also lose several adored characters whose absence will reverberate in the upcoming season as the second chapter comes to a close, and the show gets ready for its third season. Here is a breakdown of everything that occurs in the tenth and final episode of season two of Foundation as well as what it implies moving forward for our main characters. Spoilers ahead. Foundation season two episode ten recap. Hari Seldon miraculously appeared at the end of the previous episode, precisely when he was needed. Gaul is not surprised to see him again, but Salver is. As it turned out, Gaul and he had a closer bond than anyone could have anticipated. Gaul altered the brain of the man seeing Hari sink while he was still conscious using his mind. She also used her influence to convince everyone that Hari, and not the guard, was the corpse in the water. In the meantime, Hari made his way back to Gaul through the challenging terrain of Ignis. She made an effort to bury him deep inside her head where Telem wouldn't look for him. The inhabitants of Ignis admit that Telem had been imprisoning them when she dies. Her death has set their minds free because she had been inside of them. Gaul, Salver, and Hari are asked to stay so they can establish Ignis as their second foundation. Rue and Dusk are imprisoned in the former jail where Demerzel was confined at Trantor. All pretensions are dropped when she discovers them there. Demerzel states that she has been trained to protect the genetic dynasty and maintain it, therefore she would stop at nothing to make sure that no one, not even the Cleons, can destroy it. She acknowledges that she employed the blind angels, but the intention was not to kill Day. To disrupt his plans to marry Sarath and have children, it was done in order to blame Sarath and have her executed. Day, who is growing more ferocious, aims to destroy every planet that has joined the Foundation. Bel Rios decides to confront him as a result of this. It also transpires that Hari Seldon's plan to transport Day's whole fleet to Terminus in order to be destroyed included Hober Mallow's success in forging a partnership with the Spacers. But by starting that procedure, Mallow also gives the rest of the crew and himself a death sentence. Day loses his temper and tries to escape his impending demise. This results in a struggle between him and Bel Rios, who switches bodies using Mallow's technology. So when people witness Bel Rios being launched into space from an airlock, it is truly Day. While Bel Rios exacts retribution on Day, the fact that the ship is sinking remains unchanged. Only one pod has the capacity to remove one person at a time from danger. Constant will be the one to accept it, it is agreed. Hober Mallow and Bel Rios share a wine glass after she is gone, and they finally perish along with the rest of the fleet. Foundation Season 2 Finale Ending Is Salver Dead? Things at Ignis calm down as people accept Salver, Gaul, and Hurry. They pause and reorient themselves. While Gaul and Hari are being attended to, Salver regains her powers and plays heads or tails with the children. They had no idea that Telem had wormed her way into a young boy's thoughts. She found it challenging to enter Gaul's mind, but she had no trouble doing it with the boy, who possessed far less mental strength. The boy attempts to warn the others when he still senses her presence in his head, but it's already too late. The youngster is fully possessed by Telem, who then uses him to assault Gaul. Salver sees this coming and shoots the youngster, but he also shoots Salver as he tries to save Gaul. When the boy passes away, Telem is finally gone for forever. However, Salver's situation also doesn't seem promising. She bleeds to death because her injuries are too serious for her to survive. Everyone is shocked by her passing, especially Gaul who witnessed Salver's death 150 years in the future. Salver's life would eventually be in jeopardy, but she was planning to change that future and didn't expect it to happen so quickly. Salver cannot be brought back, yet her passing creates a fresh opportunity. After all, the future is changeable. It is not unalterable. Any subsequent events might likewise be changed if Salver passed away 150 years before her time. This implies that the mule, who in the future appeared to be unbeatable, is likewise susceptible to defeat. The demise of Hober Mallow can likewise be explained in the same manner. It was assumed that when his name was mentioned 150 years in the future, he would be there to battle alongside the Mentalics. But since he is no longer alive, any role he might have had in the future can be changed. What happens to Hari and Gaul? Gaul is struggling with losing her daughter, but she knows she must continue. They need to establish the second foundation and get ready for the mule who will be waiting for them 150 years from now because the plan is still in progress. Gaul is instructed by Hari to enter cryosleep, awaken once a year to communicate with the Mentalics, and then return 150 years later to confront the mule. He intends to stay awake during that time and instruct the Mentalics in psychohistory, preparing them for the impending conflict. Gaul, however, has other ideas. Gaul is not prepared to lose Hari either after losing Salver. Before entering cryosleep, she thinks they can wait a year so they can train the Mentalics together. Hari wouldn't have to learn everything on his own, Therefore the learning curve would be shorter. They can enter cryosleep once they believe the Mentalics are prepared to move forward on their own and awaken when they are prepared to face the mule. The show jumps 152 years in the final scene, and we see the mule getting ready to battle Gaul Dornick because he thinks it's about time she wakes up. He is prepared for what is coming because he is aware of it. In contrast, Gaul and Hari would enter it utterly unaware of what has occurred in the outside world while they were away. 
Thankfully, they will have support. Set the timer back. After 152 years, Constant is found floating in space, hoping to be rescued before the air in her pod runs out. She is astonished to find herself in front of the vault and is fortunate to be discovered. Polly Verisoff and Glon are among the people on Terminus who have been confirmed to be alive. Selden desired the destruction of the First Foundation, but he did not desire for Day to blow up Terminus. The vault, which is much larger than anyone could have imagined, was open to everyone on the world. Constance's loved ones are all secure. She won't be alone when she wakes up more than a century and a half later, and neither will Hari or Gaul. What happens to Dawn and Sarif? While events on Terminus and Igni's shift, Trantor also sees a lot of changes. Dawn tries to protect Sarif from Demerzel when she is taken into custody, but he notices the green mark that Dusk left on her neck. He understands that this is a traitor's mark, so he cannot put his trust in Demerzel. Later, he takes advantage of a gap in the situation and flees with Sarif. Sarif's two slaves, who are impersonating her and Dawn, divert Demerzel and the others' attention while the real Sarif and Dawn flee. Dawn and Sarith have already left Trantor by the time Demerzel realizes what has transpired. Demerzel warns them that no matter what they do, her programming will cause her to pursue and murder them. In response, Dawn expresses sympathy for Demerzel while Sarith discloses she is expecting. Demerzel contends that merely being pregnant does not guarantee that a person's offspring will be capable. Her prophecies don't phase Dawn or Sarith, though. They are happy to be together and confident in their ability to provide a loving and caring upbringing for their child. Demerzel decants three new versions after the sudden death of all three Cleons. The new clones will obey her while thinking they have always been in command, giving her complete authority over the genetic dynasty once more. She will also continue to carry out the principles of her programming. It also transpires that Demerzel took the Prime Radiant when she left Day on the ship with Bel Rios and the others. Even though she doesn't fully get it yet, she will do so someday. This implies that Demerzel might be aware of Hari and Gaul's full strategy by the time they recover from their tears. She now holds a position of authority, which is bad news for our heroes since they already have the mule to contend with. Hari seldom planned Day's arrival and even the devastation of Terminus, thus is it possible that he purposefully allowed the Prime Radiant to be taken away knowing that it would end up in Demerzel's possession. Selden wanted to keep Demerzel busy so that he could concentrate on the second foundation, but is it the actual one or some phony replica of it? If it's true, does Selden intend to win Demerzel around by showcasing their potential for the future? Will Demerzel aid Hari and Gaul when the mule shows up, or will she hatch her plans? The answer won't be known until the next season. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more.